The hard part is not going from bad to good. The hard part is leaving behind good to go chase greatness. So hard. Welcome back, everyone, to School of Greatness Podcast. We've got my man, Rory Baden, in the house. Yes, again. Good to see you, brother. Hey, this is my third time here. Is that the most of anyone you've ever third had? Time on the show? On the show. It's no. been over the span of many years. Six years or something. Chris Lee has been on, what, 13 times? Oh, yeah. 13 well. times. I think there's only maybe three people who've been on three times. Maybe. Maybe four. I've got, uh, I think Gary vee has been on three times, I think. Never heard of him. Tony Robbins has been on three <laughs> times. Tony Robbins has been on three times. Um, I think Tim Ferriss, at least two, maybe three, but. You know, well, that's good company a, to be a in. a small group. Of that's good company to be in. five people. And the last time we had you on, we talked about building an influential personal brand. Yeah. The strategy behind building it. Why, and today we're talking about ways to monetize your personal brand, the five different ways to monetize, but why is personal branding still such an important thing that everyone should be thinking about? Whether you're an entrepreneur, freelancer, employee, why is this important for everyone, or is it not important for people to build their personal brand? I mean, it's huge. It's, it's, the, it's the future, right? I mean, that's one of the reasons why we, we got in this space is just, look at how your life has changed, you know, as the School of Greatness has grown. And uh, I think w here's something that's fascinating about to the, the, the world today is that I think in many ways people are aspiring more for influence than they are for income. Why is that? It's because you can't buy influence. Right, like you, you in in some ways you can you, you can, can fake buy it. You can fake buy it. Fake likes and followers. Yeah, but not real true influence is by how you create something in the world or the way people perceive you, or that people really want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, it's, it's, it's and it's the difference between like you know a dictator can 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 you know force things to happen, but somebody who has influence makes things happen. You know, Oprah has influence. She says something and people respond. Yeah. That's different than I forced a law to pass or I'm your boss and you must do this. Uh -huh. And I think, you know, there's so many ways to make money and I just think there's a big movement in the world where it's like, we don't need more money. What we need is less stress. We need less complexity. We need more freedom. We need more peace. We need, we need to feel more aligned with our purpose. Doesn't mean we don't want money, but you know, like at Brand Builders, it's interesting because we say that our audience is mission-driven messengers. Mm. It's people like you. I mean, I think it is no accident that we started working with you so closely because it's not that money isn't important. It's just that money isn't the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So we want to make money. We, 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 our, the mission, it takes money to finance the mission, but at the end of the day, the message is more important than the money. I wonder if you ask people a question, if they could have all the income in the world and no influence, and they couldn't use the money to get any attention or influence, or all the influence in the world, but no money and they couldn't use the influence to gain money. Which would you choose? Which would you choose? I mean, that'd be a good question to put on Insta or something I'm, as a, I'm, I'm as a survey. Maybe could, people could leave a comment on the yes. on, down on the blog for this. We'll uh, do that. Send me a DM also of your reply, what you would do, but we'll, we'll share that out there. But I would say this, you know, a, a lot of our clients, so, so our clients typically fit into two different categories. It's people who are sometimes, and I, I say this, you know, politely, they're Twitter rich and dollar broke, yeah. as we say. You know, they have a big following, and they don't have any money. They don't know how to monetize. They it. don't know how to monetize it. Mm. So we're we're helping those people. Um, and then there's people who have all the money in the world, but no one knows who they are. Nobody knows who they are. And they're trying to build a following, and that's so hard for them, right? And it's, it's different. Cool. Building a following is different than building a business. There and there's there's some commonalities, but. Again, it's like, I think people with money, what they really are aspiring for is influence. Be Why? Because I don't, I think it's just because you make, they want to make a difference in the world and you, you, you keep score at some point in your life, like by how much money you have. 
Right. But then over time, you realize that it's not fulfilling me anymore. It's not fulfilling. It's it's not like once you get past a certain threshold, it's ten million in the bank or a million dollars. I mean, or whatever. it depends on who you are, but yeah. it can be. I mean, for some people, it, it can be a hundred thousand dollars a year, and it's just like there's nothing more I aspire to have. But there is always more that I aspire to be. Mm. There is there is there is more that I aspire to impact and, and to influence and to create in the world. And that is what is available through a personal brand. And, and yeah. people go, you know, I don't care to be the richest person in the world, but man, I would love to have the kind of impact that Mother Teresa has mm -hmm. and, and Gandhi, Gandhi yeah. and Martin Luther King. And, and even, you know, you see the, the modern business moguls. You mentioned Tim Ferriss and, and Gary Vaynerchuk and Tony Robbins. like. Those guys all make plenty of money, but they're not the richest people in the world, but, but they've made a tremendous impact. And I think that that is the currency of the day, that influence and impact has become m m more in pursuit than just income by mm -hmm. itself. Because a lot of people are able to make the money, but after that, they need something else. Then what? You gotta do something else with your life, a purpose. And impacting people is usually the way to, to have that purpose. And so many people, you know, the generation before us, our, you know, our parents and, and things, like so many people that worked hard to give us the things they never had, which was, which was noble in many ways and, and wonderful, but it also taught us that many of us looked ahead and we saw people who were not happy and they were trading happiness for prosperity per se, or for safety, income, a home, everything, yeah. Yeah, and 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 you know the younger generation has said, screw that, I don't I don't care, I don't need to I don't need to own a home, I don't need to even have a permanent residence. Like I'll go travel the world and couch surf and Airbnb and and I don't need to have a car. Like you know I'll share a car with somebody. Mm -hmm. But the thing that everybody across every generation has in common is I want my life to count for something. Mm -hmm. I want matter. I want to matter. And I think, you know, if you look at Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I was just having this conversation with a client yesterday, as a matter of fact, um, and we were talking about how self-actualization is like the highest, the highest thing, right? It's like, I have become all, you know, all that I can be. But I think there's a higher level than that. And it's, it's not self-actualization, it's others actualization is that even when you become your, your highest self, which I think is a very valuable pursuit, mm. there's still an emptiness in self-achievement. We, we quickly realize, I mean, and, and just to use myself as an example in, in some realm, right? I was like, I had the dream to become a world champion public, speak, a public speaker, and I basically did that. <laughs> I yeah. came in second. Um, Want to be a New York Times bestselling author. New York author. Times bestselling author. <clears throat> Wanted to build an eight figure business. Build an eight figure company. Like the next thing, the next thing. And it started when I was young. It was my first thing was I wanted to be a black belt, and then I wanted to be valedictorian, and I wanted to get a full ride scholarship. And my life was this sequential thing. And, and you realize, even being a New York Times bestselling author, as wonderful as it is, and it's a worthwhile pursuit the deep satisfaction that comes from that lasts for about 10 minutes. Yeah. Because what you really realize is it's like, I don't want to be on a bestseller list. I want people to read my book and have it change their life for years and years and years and years and have many, many people do that. Yeah. And so it's, it's really others actualization. It's, and the vehicle of personal branding and, and the yeah. tools of digital media have made that more available and accessible yeah. than ever before. So why are there so many people Twitter rich, but money poor then? Why have, why have people who have started building a following been unable to monetize their personal brand? And what are the five ways to start monetizing your brand? Yeah, so that's a good question. So at, at the other end of the spectrum, right, is, is the Twitter rich and dollar broke, so to speak. Um, and these are people who have developed influence and now it's like, Gosh, I would love for it to become my full-time job. Like I would love to, to, I would love to have the thing I love <clears throat> become my full-time job. Yeah. And that is something that is available now, but it's like, well, how do you do that? And, how, and there's a big difference again between growing a following and growing an income. So you still need to learn the skills of making money. It, mm -hmm. it, it is a, it's a skill, it's a, it's a talent. It is. And you know, to answer your question directly, there are five ways that we talk about um, 
about how to make money. And so when we're working with a client, we basically gonna, we're gonna lay out these five ways, these five primary ways. We call them the paids, five ways to get paid, mm -hmm. basically, to, to take a pile of followers or a pile of influence. And have them give you money. And have, them, have that turn into money in your bank account, yeah. okay? So here's, here's what, paids is an acronym, right? Yeah. P-A-I-D-S. So the P stands for product, product. So you can take a bunch of people and you can sell them a product, a physical good. Like a book. Like a book. Yeah, Yeah. so a, a book would be a product. But I would say this, personal branding is not limited to just people who do information marketing. And I think that's what's fascinating. About half of the clients we're working with at Brand Builders Group are now executives, entrepreneurs, CEOs, who never care to sell a video course yeah, or yeah. get paid to do a speech. Right. They're just trying to bring awareness, like Gary Vee. Gary Vee doesn't actually sell video courses and stuff. No. He brings awareness to the different ventures he's involved in. Um, so yeah. anyways, uh, you're, you know, your company might, you might have water. You, uh, Dave Asprey is a good example of this, yeah. right? Like the bulletproof coffee. So it could be a, a food item. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah Blakely would be a good example of this with Spanx, right? Like her primary business model is still a physical product. Mm -hmm. She's got a personal brand that draws attention to that. Yeah. So physical product. Those are products. Are um, and by the way, there's no one of these five that are better than the other. They mm -hmm. all have advantages and they all have disadvantages. Sure. Okay. okay. So number two is ads and affiliate. Affiliates. Yeah. Ads and affiliates. This is really fascinating, which is that you can monetize your audience without ever selling anything to your without audience. Without ever having to create a product, a physical good, deal with shipping, deal with customer support, returns. Content creation. Product managers. Yeah. Never having to deal with any of that. <laughs> yes. And what are some examples of businesses that do that really well based off of a personal brand? Yeah, so, well, I think the School of Greatness is, right. is one. Um, I don't know how much you feel comfortable sharing your personal journey, maybe we can talk about that. Sure, sure. About you know the work that we've done together over the last eighteen months. When you came to us originally, you had lots of these. Yeah, all of them. We, yeah, Probably. you had like all of these. Yeah. And and one of the one of the problems is that when you have diluted focus, you get diluted results. Yeah. And so we help people figure out what is what we call their primary business model, um, and then we go. It is that which everything else should be in support of that thing. Mm -hmm. And in your case, we realize that actually your long-term primary business model is ads and affiliates. It's the exactly. podcast itself. It's exactly. the thing that you once thought of as a, just a traffic source that has actually become the main business model. Right. So it's the it's the yeah. it's the the ads, right? It's yeah. it's the sponsors of the show who make the show possible. Let, we'll 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 tell the rest of that story after we do the other. Okay. Three. Yeah. So we'll come back. So so yeah. but podcasts would be a good example of that, and and affiliates, right? Like you have a following, you can sell other people's products, right. and they're paying you you know some percentage. Right. The difference between ads and affiliates, by the way, is an ad is is not a pay for performance. It's just a pay for, for impression, right? Like for so many impressions, you're gonna be in front of this many people. I'm gonna give you this much money if you post this on your social media. This I'm gonna many give times. you this much money if you share it on your podcast, I'm gonna, whatever it may be. Exactly, right. Based and, on the impressions, based on a calculation that you come up with or that's industry standard for that thing. Yeah, and it could, it could be your whole platform. It could include your newsletter and your right, social right. and your podcast, or whatever. Affiliates is a pay for result. Yeah, you get a sale, I give you a commission. Yep. A lot of people do this with Amazon on books. You can it's do like that with, yeah. with books. You get a commission from Amazon, Audible. You see that all the time for people. All the time. Okay, so products, ads, and affiliates. What's the third so way? So the I is information. Yeah. This is the one that I think historically people have associated personal branding with because there's some elements of personal branding that sort of spun out of information marketing or, mm -hmm. or even digital marketing. So this is the classic video course membership site, yep. assessments, um, certifications. Uh, these are information-based products. Basically, it's intellectual property delivered in a digital medium. Yeah. Um, on on, on e-books. E-books would yeah. be a great example of this. And, and in the last uh, in episode, was it 670? 670. 670, where we actually talked about dares. Mm -hmm. We look for things that are digital, automated, recurring, evergreen, and scalable. Yep. 
um, the information line lends itself well to some of those yes. to some of those dares. Yeah. Um, so yeah, video courses and, and, and things like that. Information. But, products, but also yeah. assessments and certifications are are less common. But like, you know, we have some friends that do assessments really well, and it's like that is is their their main thing. Got it. Okay. And the D. D is for deals. Deals. It's like so, being an agent. So it's a third party deal that somebody is paying you and it typically includes both a, a an element that is not for performance in advance and it usually includes a long tail royalty feature okay. so a book deal a brand deal a movie deal a tv deal um, some of the clients that we work with at brand builders group are musicians and we're actually helping them create other ancillary revenue streams mm -hmm. but their primary business model is their their music deal like right. their their publishing deal? Right. So there's a, a third party that's usually like a distributor who's paying you a, a guarantee regardless of performance plus a royalty. Got it. Um, why this is why licensing deals would mm -hmm. also fall into this, which is one of the most underutilized forms of IP, which is people spend all this time creating their IP and they sell it to their audience and they never think about going. Corporations, what, yeah. what corporation would just license this content from me? And you know, so so those are those the are brand deals. But yeah, so, so traditional like, book publishing. So like Darren Prince, would he be an example as deals because he's an agent for all these athletes and Hollywood? Yeah. So people. Darren Prince. So you met him when you had Rodman on the show, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. I just had lunch with him yesterday. Too. Oh, that's so great. Yeah. yeah. So I love I love Darren. Yeah. Uh, so he's a mutual friend. He's a client of ours. Yeah. Right. So so yeah. So Darren does deals. Yeah. He's he's on the agent side of it. So when uh -huh. you do a deal, there's usually like three parties. There's yeah. usually like the publisher, the agent, and the talent. Yeah. The brand or the company that's giving you money to the talent. The publisher. The publisher. Right, yeah, or it could be a brand yeah, or, or, or a distributor. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Then you have the agent, which would be like a literary agent or a speaking agent. You know, it, it, Darren is is kind of like an all encompassing agent, like a manager. Yeah. And then the talent, you know, like Dennis Rodman and um, Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan. He yeah. works with several, Magic Johnson. He, he works with several celebrities that he, he manages. But he is also. An author now, yeah, right. So he is off also the products. Getting, yeah, yeah, so he's also selling a physical product, and and the difference, by the way, uh, um, a book that you self-publish would be product, but a book that you traditionally publish would be a deal. Interesting. And they're different, and they have a different set of uh, considerations. Yeah. Right. Okay. So when you get a New York publishing deal, as you well know, there's a different set of expectations and right. things that come with it, but exactly. also also great benefits. Exactly. Okay. So deals, and the last one, the S. Okay, last but not least is services. Services. So would that be coaching? Yes, yeah, basically services. speaking, coaching, consulting, training. Okay. Now, for anyone that's listening that is going, I hate my job, I want to quit and I want to pursue my personal brand, usually when those people come work with us, we point them towards services in the short term because services are the typically the fastest path to cash. It's easy to sell, go on Instagram and say, hey, I'm doing coaching or I'm offering consulting. Send me an email, let's jump on a call if you're interested. Literally. And like get a $1,000 client, a $5,000 client, whatever it may today. be. Today, I yeah, mean, you now. could say, hey, you know, put out some piece of content, you know, DM me for a free call, you do the call this afternoon, Venmo me some money, mm -hmm. and we do, our, you know, we do our first consulting or whatever, you know, like whatever it is. It's just a, but, but any service, um, the, the, the problem with services is that it's a time for money exchange. Time consuming. So it's the most monetizable in the short term with mm -hmm. the least amount of barriers to entry and the least resistance, but it's the least scalable yeah. long term. It has the least number of the dares, digital, automated, recurring, evergreen, and, and scalable. Right. It's not digital, it's not automated, it's not, well, it can sometimes be recurring, yeah. it's not evergreen, and it's not scalable at all. Your calendar is your inventory. Unless you're now hiring and training other consultants to do the coaching consulting for you there's a scalability effect but true you can't scale yourself true which is what brand builders group does right so so our team we have certified personal brand strategists yeah. who basically take our frameworks yeah. and they run people 
they run people, the process. They run people through the process. And if they want you, they pay a premium. They do. Yeah. yeah, or they come to a, a group, like an event, exactly. like one of our little in, intensive boot camps. So this would be, spe- uh, services would be speaking, coaching, consulting, training, masterminds. Uh, yep, masterminds would be a group a, coaching. Yep, I would call a master a mastermind is still a time for money exchange. There's some limit to the scalability. Would it be workshops too? The same thing. Yeah, like a public seminar mm-hmm. would would still fit into this. Now, to some extent, you can scale them quite far, right? Like you know, when I first started speaking, my first speaking engagement, I got fifty bucks. Right. Right. My fee today is much higher. There's people yet even still with speaking fees that are much higher than mine. So you can get a hundred thousand dollars to go stand on stage for an hour. That's fairly scalable. Yeah. I mean, but you you still only have so many days a year. So many days, so many yeah, so many hours that you can get paid. So for. many hours. Yeah. So, and now, you know, seminars are a little more scalable. I mean, but someone like you know, John Gordon is a guy who he's making millions every year uh, just by speaking. Yeah, and John, and John and Gordon, Jason Dorsey, um, yeah. you know, uh, they do it Jay, full time. Jay Bear, yeah, that Carrie Loran, Sally Hogshead, yeah. these are people that are making Multi seven figures or close to, yeah, yeah. Or at least yeah, just in keynote fees. Then they have their books. Then you've got books, and then they may have some of these training, other things. Consulting or coaching. But this is where the problem also comes. Diluted. The diluted focus gets diluted <laughs> results. And so this is when I came to you. Uh, so for people listening on episode six seventy, which was really powerful, I came to Rory about a was it a year and a half ago? 18? Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was about 18 months ago. Maybe. 18 months ago, I came to Rory because I was doing all of these, I think. I wasn't doing software. Where would software be under here? Uh, yeah, so software would probably sit either under information or maybe product, depending okay, on some gotcha. of the features. So I guess I didn't have software. What I had, membership site, courses, books, audio books. Self-published books. Self-published books, live events. E-books. Ma- e-books, mastermind. <laughs> Um, and, one-on-one and the, coaching, and one-on-one coaching, and podcast, the podcast, sponsorships, and affiliates, speaking. I was doing it all. Video courses, deals. I was doing everything, and we were doing great. But I remember feeling like I started looking out into the future, and I was like, I don't know how to get the financial numbers I want to get to by doing all this, unless I build a department and a team under each thing that we were doing so we could scale it all bigger because I was realizing my time and energy was limited by trying to do everything at the best level. So we were doing everything at an 80% level. Right. And that was frustrating me. I was like, ah, but I'm not like the as best as I could be. I'm not living at the highest quality because my energy was diluted like you mentioned. So I reached out to you and I said, I just feel like Rory will be able to help me. I don't know why. Which because is funny. You weren't, you weren't doing any of this from before. Well, no, yeah. no. And we hadn't talked in like at least a year. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of it. So I remember calling you and I was just like, hey, I, I want to come to Nashville and meet because I think you could help me gain clarity. Mm-hmm. In fact, we were just in the process of exiting our former business, yeah. which did sales coaching. Like we yes. were coaching salespeople one-on-one. This wasn't even on the radar. No. And then all of a sudden, Lewis House calls me and says, hey, you know, can I spend some time with you? Yeah, and we came down, was it a day, day and a half, two days or something? Yeah, it was like two days. The f- well, you've been, you've been for three separate two-day sessions, yeah, yeah. plus other stuff that we The first time was like a two-day thing, and we just mapped out the vision, the brand identity, the vision, figuring out what is my uniqueness. We talked about this in the last podcast. Yeah. And it's like really getting clarity on what your uniqueness is as a personal brand. That's step one. Yeah, and your vision for your business and your mission and everything moving forward. Yeah. Because I felt like we were doing a lot really well, but I didn't know where, how I was gonna take it all to the next level. So I needed, so I was working hard for 10 years and it was growing and everything was great and we were creating new products and opportunities and revenue streams, but it didn't seem clear for the future. I didn't see the clear path and for me, I'm really good at helping others with a clear vision and I've always been good with myself of having a clear vision and it was the first time I wasn't clear. And that was a wake up call where I was like, I need someone else to help see it from a different perspective. So we came, we came to you, Matt was there too, right? Matt was there, yeah. yeah Matt was there. And we mapped Matt out. Matt was there the first time and the third time. Yeah. He bailed the second yeah, time. Yeah, it was the keynote one, right? Yeah, on yeah. the keynote one, yeah. And so we came to you and we mapped out all of the paids then we do that. We mapped we out all the paid. Yep. We looked at them on our, we, we took you through something we call the revenue assessment. Yep. We gridded them all out. To figure out what your business model is. 
based on revenue. Based on actual data, right? right? And so based on the data of like, we mapped out all of our revenue streams, and I think courses are- At that time, video courses was your number one revenue stream. So we were a video course company- Yet- Based on revenue. It was the probably the furthest disconnected from your personal uniqueness and your long-term and mission. vision and yeah. your mission. Yeah. Like, and so that's why I think it was like, gaining that clarity was so powerful for me. It was so eye-opening. And we, and we had, um, so we had products, we had deals, we had information, we had services, we had a mastermind, and the least revenue generating source was the podcast, was affiliates and, and ads, right, sponsorships. Mm -hmm. And we had this kind of aha moment where it was like, wow, really the podcast is aligned to your mission of impacting 100 million people a week, it's aligned to what you wanna do of helping transform the world, and yet it's the thing you're kind of spending the least amount of time focused on. So we need to figure out how we're going to transition and switch it to being number one as opposed to the bottom. Right. And that was 18 months ago. Right. And it's been like this transition. And you said to me, what'd you say then? You were like, this doesn't have to change right now where you let go of all these revenue streams now, but in the future sometime, this will need to switch. Yep. This is the, the analogy that we use. It's like launching a rocket ship, yeah. right? So when you, when you launch a rocket ship, you have like, it takes everything like to launch a personal brand and just like make enough money to pay the bills. It's just like, in some ways it's, you're just, you're doing whatever you can do to get the thing off the ground. But then over the course of time, you should be getting clearer and clearer about where you're going. And those, those side rockets, they have to fall off. And this is, the tough decision that you've been willing to make that most people are not, which is the hard part is not going from bad to good. The hard part is leaving behind good to go chase greatness. So hard. And, and you, were, you were literally hitting Sheehan's wall. So if, if y'all didn't, you go back and listen to the episode yeah, 670, 670 <clears throat> where we talk about Sheehan's wall. You were hitting Sheehan's wall, not from a messaging perspective as much, but you were from right. a revenue perspective. Your, yeah. your team was, was fragmented and fractionalized and you spread thin. And when we created that focus, I mean, focus is power, right? Like I talk about this in the Take the Stairs book, that you, if you put a magnifying glass between the sun and a piece of paper, the piece of paper catches on fire because focus, like literally, scientifically, focus is power. If you take the magnifying glass away, nothing happens. Yeah. That is very, very much the description of how most m most people's um, you know revenue streams are. Is there there they and it's not like you weren't making money. You were making more money than you'd ever made in your right. life. Right. But but I wasn't breaking through the wall. I wasn't. It wasn't all aligned to my vision a hundred percent, and I felt like I couldn't see a clear path to the future. And that was a challenge. So it wasn't like life wasn't bad or hard. It was just like, but if I want to continue to grow and make the, the biggest contribution for my life and have more mission and purpose, I needed clarity. Yeah, and you and it, and it was it was it was it's first being clear on your your dream. Yeah, yeah. and then it is having the courage to chase it and, and let go of really good things that are already really, yeah. successful, helping people, making money. <laughs> Yeah. supporting my team, paying for a lifestyle, all that. And it's interesting, you know, so, you know, in, Christ in Christianity, this is kind of a random parallel, but you know, I'm a, I'm a Jesus freak. It, there's, a, there's a concept that is called sanctification. And that it's like, you know, when you, when you become a Christ follower, that's not the end, that's the beginning. Mm -hmm. Even though like that day is when you go to heaven, so that's done, like heaven is a done deal. Yeah. But then you go through, it begins a process of sanctification, which is a gradual cleansing, a, like a, a steady improvement, oh. uh, um, not to earn your way to, to, to heaven, so it's not the perfect parallel, but because you're grateful for what you have. Similarly here, when it's like, when you're clear on this vision, the clearer you are on your vision, your long-term vision, the more obvious it becomes what short-term sacrifices need to be made. Wow. And inversely, the amount of our endurance is directly proportionate to the clarity of our vision. So if I can see something clearly, something that I want, something that matters to me, something that I believe in, something, something that I feel called to, like in your case, it's, it's a calling. Mm -hmm. 
as you see that more clearly, then there is a, a, a strong connection to the decisions and the choices and the sacrifices that must be made today to forward you towards that vision. So it creates a context for action and discipline to take place. And your, your discipline engages automatically as a byproduct of the vision. Yeah. But if you have a cloudy vision, or if you have too much stuff going on, or, or you have a clear vision, but you don't spend any time thinking about it, then there is at best a convoluted connection to how the sacrifices and the choices and, 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 and the decisions that need to be made today forward you towards something you care about. And so you get stuck. Yeah. And it's, it's not because you're lazy. It's not because you struggle from a lack of discipline. Most people think, this is really like take the it's stairs. It's not because you don't work hard. It's not because you're not working hard. Um, and this is really like right out of take the stairs, is, is that most people think they struggle with a lack of discipline. They're not struggling as much from a lack of discipline as they're struggling from a lack of vision. Mm. And so you have to get clear on that vision first, and then you have to have the courage to chase it. Yeah. And that is freaking hard, especially when you're doing great, especially when you're already, like in your case, you are already a multi seven figure business. Mm. So for most people, it's like, why would I, you know, why not just play it safe and, right. and play it cool? And, and the answer is because that's not what you're called to. Ooh, that's good. You're speaking some Jesus talk over here. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, it's just, it's not what you're called to. And that's why, you know, so brand builders, one of the things that's, I think, also interesting and sort of unique about us, one of the reasons we got into the space beyond just that you called us randomly at yeah. this time in our life where Crazy. we had this wide open space. And then, and you said, you're this the one the who thing. told us, this is your next, this next, this next business. Um, but everybody, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of skills needed to build a personal brand. You know, it, it's, it's creating content. It is social media. It's building funnels. It's copywriting. There's Facebook ads. There's, there's uh, running webinars. There's marketing automation. There's SEO. There's graphic design. There's video editing. Right, Th those are all things that are you know probably skills. Yeah. Um, but most of the people who teach them, they teach it, they teach it, and it's a singular tool in the tool belt. And it's like when you're a, when you're a hammer, all you see is nails. Right. So what we realized is we said there's nobody <clears throat> in the space sitting on top of all that, going, how do we coordinate all this crap? in a focused direction to serve the person's mission. Not just how do I get more clicks on my ads yeah. or, or get more downloads on my podcast, but how does this all forward to the mission I am called to live? So how does someone know which things they should be focusing on? How do they, is it step one, get clear on your mission and your vision? Well, yeah. And then <laughs> I mean, pick... my, my first thought was come work with us for two days. We'll <laughs> exactly. take you through a process, but we can go through it now a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. So, so I mean, how do I, how do I know if I've got, if I'm Twitter rich and money poor, cash poor, like, so you would say, let first me run, thing is, yeah. Ahead. So let me run you through a few of them. Yeah. Okay. So each of these has, has, you know, advantages and disadvantages. For example, products become extremely high margin after break even. Mm -hmm. So like once you've sold your break even point of Spanx, everything beyond that becomes extremely profitable. Yeah. But the brand development it takes to get there, time. the time and the logistical process of manufacturing and distribution and getting it, you know, in the, the proper yeah. places is is not an easy feat. Right. Okay? So there's you go one of the things we look at is what are my strengths, right? So it's like, okay, if I'm good at logistics, I'm good at building a brand and I'm good at coming up with product ideas and I'm good at sourcing inventors and people, you know, and manufacturers, maybe products is good. Right. But if I'm not good at that, then maybe I should look at something else. The ads and affiliates, here's who this is great for. If you are great at throwing a party, which is you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? Like Getting if, people together. Get people together. Rallying behind something. Community, yeah. like let's all like support each other. And like if you create community and, and this is, you know, if you're good at creating a bunch of followers and fans, then it's like this could be really great for you because you know how to build an audience. You know how to throw a party. This is one that I realized that I'm not that good at, yeah. right? Like I'm much better at creating content and structure and stuff. I'm not one of the cool kids per se. <laughs> <laughs> so 
I think you and I work well together because you know how to throw a party and, and we know we, we do a lot of execution like yeah. on the back end. But so if you're not, you know, if social media drives you nuts, ads and affiliates is probably not the right model for you, yeah. right? Because you're not good naturally at building audience. You should go find partners who are good at building an audience. Sure. And they're going to love you because all the stuff you do gives them a freaking headache and stress and, and inversely. Right. Um, information. <laughs> So information is, is an interesting one. There's a low barrier of entry, which is why there's a lot of people getting into it. But, but one of the challenges is, is uh, there's a lot of very mediocre information. Yeah, yeah. And what we are gonna encourage people to do, uh, you know, is to create true thought leadership, which means- Intellectual uh, property, mm -hmm. IP for yourself, for your own ideas. Yes, except the challenge that we wanna hold people to is to advance the thinking of what's already been done, mm -hmm. not to regurgitate what is already out there in the space. For example, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, not just saying, here's Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but here's actually what's missing. Yeah, like here's from self-actualization to others actualization. That could be like furthering the conversation that's already out there. Correct, and, and some people may disagree with, you know, could disagree with that or whatever, yeah. but that's fine. That's thought leadership. It, yeah. it literally means you're spending the time to advance the thinking that has been done, uh -huh. not repackaging and regurgitating, although you can get really far with doing that as well. Um, so in information, generally, are you tech savvy? Like if you're not tech savvy, you're either going to have to hire or get a great tech team or right. people or let it go. Um, deals is kind of a, a special one. That's usually like once you have a huge platform or you have to be extraordinarily talented. Yeah. Extremely talented. Services is, is kind of a good one. It's, it's low barrier entry, but again, it's not going to probably scale. Scalable, yeah. So, but it can, it can get you to a point, right? Like it can certainly get you free of your, the job you hate or you know, create more flexibility in your life or, uh -huh. or, or whatever. And some people, I mean, this is how I came up, right? My dream was to be a speaker. Like originally, I never knew what entrepreneurship was. Personal right, branding right, didn't right. even exist. I wanted to stand on stage and inspire thousands of people. And so I dedicated like my life to that for a mm -hmm. decade. Um, and get paid to do it. And get paid to do it, right? And you know, I still do that some, a few times a month, but you know, mostly we're helping our, our, our clients now yeah. become speakers and I got two, two little, little kids and so yeah. I'm not wanting to be on the road as much. That would be a good example of a downside, right? It's like, uh, you know, it's ironic, I just got inducted into the Professional Speakers Hall of Fame and more than ever, I'm, I'm not, I'm doing fewer gigs because I have, I got a toddler and a, yeah. and a baby at home. So I don't want to be on the road yeah. 70 dates a year, like, you know, I have been in the past. Right. So there's, there's, there's strengths and advantages. And it's like, what is your team and, and your assess? Like, what do you love doing? What do you not love doing? But part of your uniqueness, we believe, you know, on that last episode, we were talking about your uniqueness. Finding your uniqueness. As a message. Yes. So. So that's what that episode is like, your unique message. But this is, we believe that uniqueness also informs your monetization strategy. Like to use you as a great example, yeah. you're, you're great at throwing a party. Look at how the podcast took off, right. even though it was sort of like an ancillary thing, like it gained all this traction. Imagine what would happen if you went all in. But the reason why people don't usually go all in actually be, is because of money because they get, they're making good money, maybe better than they've ever done. And so it's a, it's a risk, it's a real risk to go all in. And there's no guarantee that even when you go all in, you'll make more money. Right. But uh, <clears throat> one of the things I love, this is uh, a guy named Craig Valentine. He was one of my mentors and, and friends, a, a world champion of public speaking who mentored me early on. Mm -hmm. uh, Craig shared this story one time with me and, and he, the point of the story was that you have to decide that your dream is not for sale. Mm. You have to come to the conclusion that there is no amount of money that someone can pay wow. me yeah. to forego the pursuit of what I am called to. And that takes tremendous courage. And discipline and courage and everything. And discipline commitment, and everything. commitment and execution because it's it's freaking scary. Scary to let go of certain things. And like and that. it's not a guarantee that it'll work, but yeah. but here's here's what I do believe firmly is that 
if you go all in on a goal, and I've actually, I can think of, I can think of two great examples where I have done this. Mm -hmm. I went all in and it didn't work out how I thought. It did not work out. It did not work out quite how I thought. Yeah. One of them was winning the world, the world championship of public speaking. As, as everyone knows, you always give me a hard time about, I came in second in the world um, in the Toastmasters World Championship of Public Speaking. Uh -huh. But that was not my goal. My goal was to come in first. But here's, If that would have happened, right? So you, you wouldn't be here. I, I may not be here. So, so here's the payoff. When you go all in on something, if it doesn't work out, you have the clarity and the blessing to know that it's because there must be some higher plan for you. Yeah. But. And you went all in. And you, and you went all in. You had nothing left. The reason why I didn't go back to do the world championship was because I had nothing left to bring to it. Like yeah. I laid it all on the line. I, I honestly could not look back and say, gosh, I could have done this better and I could have done this better. In fact, not everyone knows this story. I went to the world championship twice. So I made it to the top 10 wow. the first year and, and uh, lost. And then I, but I knew I had more to give. I went back the second year. You and had a whole year to prepare. A whole prepare. other year, yeah. did it you again. You had the speech nailed, you had the stories, everything. There's nothing I would change about the speech. The speech could have won. I, I yeah, believe yeah. it was good enough to have, could have won. It, but, but here's the thing, it, it didn't work out. So I go, you know what? At least I know that's probably because I am, there's something better waiting for me. But if you don't go all in, if you don't lay it all on the line and then your dream doesn't come true, you don't know if it's because it wasn't meant to be or because of a much more likely truth that you didn't show up and, and take the chance. You never took the swing. Mm. You, never, you never went after it. You never went all in. And so you will never know whether or not right. you were meant to do it. And sometimes you're not meant to do it. Like the world championship is a good example. I, um, thinking about it physically, it'd be like walking down your, your hallway here. By the way, I love your new place. Thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, so it's like, if, I, if I'm walking down the hallway, I have a clear vision of this door at the end of the hallway. And I get there and that door is locked. But then there is a door to my left that is open that I could not see when I was down until here you got to the left until door. I went all in. And so, you know, again, yeah, this is yeah. my spiritual belief, right? Is I believe God is leading me in a direction. And, and sometimes, you know, like if you think about prayers, sometimes when you pray, the answer is yes. Sometimes the answer is wait. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the answer is no, but I've got something better. Mm -hmm. And that is faith, right? Like that is it, it not not even spiritual faith that's just faith in the the trust sense of the word is to yeah. say i trust my calling i trust my heart i'm willing to take a shot yeah and i'm going to go all in and if it doesn't work out i firmly trust that it will lead to something better something greater something greater and it put me on a different path that i was meant to go on yeah this has happened to me in many areas of my life i remember i wanted to be uh i wanted to go to ohio state to play football yeah didn't get an offer. They, they, they said I could walk on, but I was like, I don't want to sit the bench for four years or five years. And so I decided to go to a different school and I transferred to three different schools. And I was a two sport All American and broke a world record. That would have never happened at Ohio State. I got to have all these different experiences and meet people in the totally. entire world and develop myself as an athlete, all these different things. I wanted to go to the NFL. I went to the arena league and I got injured and it didn't work out. Yeah, and you're so, that's a perfect, everything, you're, yeah. a, you're a perfect living example of this. And then I was like, but it led and me And it wasn't into, like you weren't all in on football. I you were all in. all in on football. On everything. You had no like, other plan. Zero backup plan, no other <laughs> skills. I didn't have any other options. It wasn't like, oh, I have all these talents and there's, because there's a lot of people who say, I want to do all these things. There's, I have 10 great ideas. I have one idea, one dream. And so, it was hard for me to, to not achieve it and be like, well, now what do I do? Because I have no skills. Right. And that was like a self-discovery period, a transition, a reinvention. That was Sister's Couch. Finding identity. Yeah, yeah. What's my identity now? It's discovering my, it's going on that journey of like, let me go out and develop some new skills and do speaking and salsa dancing and all these different things, which led me to the next thing. Which then led me to the podcast. Which led which you then, here. Which led me here. And you have a hundred million people 
150 that, million downloads. 150 million? Yeah, 150 million. Gosh, man. 150 million downloads. That's, that's, that's not people, but that's 150 million downloads. Well, yeah. you know, Audio my downloads. podcast has tens of downloads. <laughs> that's great. Um, <laughs> and, uh, it's, it is, it's amazing, yeah. right? Like, you would not be here if it weren't for that. Exactly. And you had to go all in. Had to go all in. If you weren't playing all in, maybe you never get injured. That's it. And then maybe you never end up here, right? Everything. The, the blessing, the blessing is not getting what you want. The blessing is going all in mm -hmm. for what you, what you think you want and being open to the idea that it may not be for you. It may not. There may be something better for better. you. Greater for your purpose, for your life. For your and that, so by the way, that in, in the Take the Stairs book, that's the, the perspective principle of faith. It's the seventh of the, the, the decisions that the, the most disciplined people in the world make. It's choosing to believe that what is happening now is somehow for a greater glory later on. Um, you know, an example of this, we use this illustration as, is uh, the, a flat tire, right? So if I was driving along mm -hmm. and I got a flat tire, you know, I would, I'd probably be, you know, most of us would freak out and be like, oh my gosh, I had this flat tire. And if somebody asked you, um, you know, inside of today, like what happened today, you'd probably tell them about the flat tire. Like that would be a big deal. But you could choose if you knew that getting a flat tire saved you from being in a car accident right. down the road, you would completely think about that differently. Like, I'm so grateful for the flat I'm tire. I'm so grateful for the flat tire. Exactly. And that is how it is. I miss my flight and then the flight goes down. I'm so grateful I miss my flight. Yeah, if you, if you we don't, and, and the thing is, is absent the ability to see the entire future, we aren't entitled to evaluate the reasons why dreams do or do not work out. Mm -hmm. The only choice that we have is to trust that if I'm called to it, I'm gonna chase after it. Yeah. I'm gonna go after it with everything I can, and if it doesn't work out, something better, something more extraordinary right. will show up in its place. And that's why for me over the last 18 months when we talked about, okay, you're switching the, uh, the paids and the, and the opportunities to make money, you're gonna be switching them eventually where the podcast is the focus. Sponsorships, ads, affiliates will be the primary business model. I was like, but how am I gonna get there? I was like, how am I gonna let go of these things? And it's been one thing at a time letting go of. First it was courses, and then we just started, we just, last week, we paused the mastermind. We're like, okay, this Have is you a, shared that on the podcast yet? We haven't shared it yet, but it's like, yeah. people have been applying for months to join. Someone who's makes, has got a nine-figure business emailed me like the day afterwards and was like, I wanna, I wanna, join. I wanna, I wanna join, right? People, the, the, there's two billionaires that have applied. It's like, there's hundreds of applications where people wanna be a part of this thing that now I'm gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna put a pause for a year and see how, see how it feels and go all in on the podcast, and go all in on this mission and see what happens. And it's... Yeah, 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 it's, hold, hold on a second, because yeah. we need to back up a little bit, because the, the, like, that's, a, that's a pretty big bomb yeah, to yeah. drop on people <laughs> about stopping the mastermind. Yeah. And I, I think it's important for people to know a little bit about why that happened and right. what happened behind the scenes, because you know, for those of you that are listening, Lewis and Matt and I, we, we actually been talking for months about how we could help support the mastermind. Right. Partnering on it. Too. Partnering on it yeah. so that I could help, you know, you and, and AJ, AJ is my wife and, and she's the CEO of Brand Builders, but like our team, how we could come and help carry some of the weight to free you up. Yeah. We had this whole plan to be like, okay, how can we support this? Because you love the mastermind. I love it. You love the, the people. The impact, the growth, everything. It's and then we started doing it. So I, at the summit, I led, was there, led yeah. that one. And then a couple of weeks ago, we led another one. And yeah. it's so funny, we made this the decision. And it was great. It was, amazing. It. it was amazing. It, it was, was like so flowing, fun. Everything, which is, keeps making me be like second chance. Maybe we should do it. <laughs> no, no. And then even even the night before you were going to announce it to the mastermind, we're you, up till midnight. You pulled me into the lobby. We're sitting there at midnight, um, and you were like, "Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should keep it going." Keep it going because the people were like, "This is changing my life. This is amazing. The the yeah. money's great. Like it was amazing. It it, 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 <laughs> it great, was it was it was amazing. Experience. But." It's not your calling. Yeah. Your calling is to reach a hundred million of people a week on right. the podcast. Yeah. And impact lives and transform and lives. And to impact lives and and for whatever reason, that's what your calling is. Yeah. And 
our job isn't to judge it, mm -hmm. our job is to support it. And one of the things that's super powerful is the clearer you are about your calling, the easier it is for people to support you in achieving yeah, it. Yeah. And you have a shot, like this podcast has a shot to become a monster mainstream, even like more than it is, right. to, to, to grow exponentially beyond where it is. And that is the thing that you're saying and have been saying ever since I've talked to you, ever since you called me and AJ and we sat down with you right. and Matt in our home, uh -huh. back then it was in our house, right. it was like the podcast is the thing. And ever since that moment, it's, it's been like a gradual sanctification of going, what do we have to eliminate? Not because we don't like it, not because we don't love the impact, but because I'm called to this one thing. Mm -hmm. And look, for any of you that are listening, if you've ever gotten anything out of this podcast, if you've ever gotten anything from this show, from any episode, mm -hmm. Lewis doesn't need you to buy something from him. Right. He needs you to share the episode with everyone. Right. He needs you to email blast it, to your 50 friends and family, like your Christmas list. He right, needs right, you right. to share it on text social media. Yeah, yeah. He needs you to text a friend. Like we have to get this podcast to a million downloads an episode. That's the next real target. And if we can get this podcast to break through that wall, it, it puts you in a position to, to literally change the world right. uh, and, to, and to be a voice for our generation like right. of, of you know, influence and, and interviewing people. And, and that is what we need. And that, that, that's what you need right. because that's what your calling is. Not yeah. because anyone told you that it's because that's what you feel. And that's why it's like, I felt called to call you 18 months ago to be like, I need some clarity because every personal brand is going to get a lot of opportunities where I could sell toothbrushes, shoes. Like we can sell anything. You can sell once, anything. Once you build an audience and you have people that uh, follow you or support you in some type of way, listening, watching, you could really start to sell lots of different things, but you got to figure out what your calling is and start going on on that thing. Whether it's a product or book or ads, or whatever, whatever it is, you got to go all, all in on it to the point where you know, okay, I've maxed it out. Right. Then I can add the mastermind. Yeah, if you I want, can add bring this it back. I, I could do these things, right. but we haven't maxed it out. You haven't fully. taken the shot. We haven't taken the full like swing. On the on the podcast. We haven't, I mean, we've been consistent for seven years almost. Yeah. We've been showing well, up in a big Well, you're not slackers. Way. It's not the school of average, yeah, as you always like say. It's not, it's <laughs> not like we're barely showing up. No. But we haven't fully dedicated every ounce of energy from everyone on the team on one thing. Which is crazy. Like, what does that look like? Going all in. Yeah, so that boggles my mind that you got here without doing that. That's also evidence that suggests that this is the thing yeah. because it's like, who else got their podcast to this size without like going all consuming in on it? Right. So it's like, what could it be? What could it be? What could it be? So you've got to take a shot. So that's, yeah, that's our mission 2020 is going all in on the podcast. All in on the podcast. Taking a pause in the mastermind. And um, everything we do has got to support the podcast. Right. Like, the goal is to write another book that supports the podcast. The goal is to keep doing the Summit of Greatness because it supports the community of the podcast. Uh, it's, like, it's the community of, it's the in-person yeah, event that the supports podcast. the podcast. So it's like, it makes you, when you get clarity on these revenue streams and what your business is and what your mission is, which is what you teach in all the different workshops at Brand Builders, which I wanna talk about in a second because we gotta wrap up here in a second. When you get clarity on that, then it's easy to say yes and no to things. As it becomes clearer. Clear. You don't have to say, well, what about this opportunity? Yeah, and it's this not thing. necessarily easier, but it's clearer. clearer. Yeah, you still want to say yes to everything, maybe, but yet you start to say, you start to draw a line in the sand and say, I'm no longer doing these things, I'm only doing these things. And that gives you more attention, more focus on the one thing, which, uh, you know, Papasan and, and Keller talk about is like uh -huh. the book, The One Thing. The One Thing, yep. How it supports everything else when you do The One Thing. Great so, guys. Um, so what can someone do right now if they've got a personal brand, they wanna build a personal brand? You've got, I think, nine different workshops and, and sessions that help you gain clarity on your brand identity, your focus. Break us down really quick so, we, so, so people can go to you to get this clarity and support like I have in three different workshops I've done with you. Yeah, so, okay, so Brand Builders Group, what do we do? We help mission-driven messengers build and monetize their personal brand. Right. And I will say this too, 
For some of you listening, the best way for you to monetize your personal brand is not to create a course and a book and become a speaker. It's to take your personal brand and direct all those people to the thing you're already doing that is making money, right? To your network marketing business, to your tech startup, to your financial advisory firm, right, right. to your, your accounting services, yeah. to your real estate. Like, like that's always the, the, the easiest your thing to do, coaching, right? Is, yeah. if, you, if you love the thing you're doing, then just use it as, an, as a multiplier to drive attention to that. We're, we're big fans of that. Like we're not gonna, we don't think everybody should become a speaker and, and that's not, it's not like we have one formula. Right. But um, yeah, so we have nine different two day experiences on all different components of this. Um, and we also do one-on-one -on -one coaching as a part of that. So we kind of like have events and then we kind of supplement and Accountability people. Accountability and coaching along the way. Along the way, just where people can have a, have a, have a strategist they talk to every single month to keep them on track, and then we have the events where uh, myself and AJ and our strategists are in person, and they're smaller. They're, yeah, they're yeah. typically like 20, 30 people. Yeah. They're boot camps. Yeah. Um, so, Intense, intensive trainings, boot camps, getting clarity on the thing you need to work on. Yeah, and we're going through these frameworks, like <clears throat> you know, a few of them we've shared here, yeah. and then we're taking you through exercises. It's not, it's not, an it's not, it's not like not sit and learn. It's a, it's a work. You're, you're doing work on the spot. Um, and the idea is that you leave with stuff done. But um, you've got one on like crafting your, your perfect keynote, on podcasting, on. Yeah, so we have phase one is called brand identification, finding your uniqueness, which is, which, we talk a lot about that on episode 670. Yeah, which is what I did first and gave me the clarity to be here now. Yep. The yeah. second one, phase two, is what we call creating your revenue engine. So that's like a lot of the monetization components. We've touched into that today. Yeah. Um, we have one phase three is called high traffic strategies. So that's like, okay, now, now that it's built, now that the house is built, how do I get more people to hear about it? Yeah. Um, so that's, you know, where you get into more like the, 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 the deep dive into SEO and Facebook ads and affiliate launches and book, you know, book launches and, you know, mm -hmm. big, big time stuff. But that's, that's Domino 86 and people often start there and that's why their whole thing explodes because right. they're working on Domino 86 because they saw a webinar for it and it's like, you need to go, your way, you're spending money in the wrong places. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, we have World Class Keynote Craft, which you came through. Yeah, it was great. So that was working on your keynote, you know, the psychology of why people laugh and helping you like get your signature stories how down. How to get standing ovations, standing how, to, ovations. how to captivate people, everything. Yeah. And then we have one called Full Keynote Calendar, which is the business of speaking. So, so Keynote Craft is the art of speaking. But full keynote calendar is how to get booked as a speaker, how right. to negotiate fees, how to set your fees, like, you know, how does that profession work? Yeah. Um, we have one called bestseller launch plan, which is specifically for launching a book or a course or a company, but like, what are the steps to actually execute a launch? Right. Um, and then you went through captivating content was the other one. Yeah. Um, we sometimes call it bestseller book outline, which is creating your body of work. Right. What is gonna be the content of the book or of, of the course? So we've got- Which you got like, help, where you, you help me create my own intellectual property and my own thought leadership. Exactly. Stuff like that. Coming up with frameworks and diagrams and stuff. And you're one of the best people that I've met that teaches strategy at a high level to make it simple for someone like me to go execute on and gain clarity. And that's why I love working with you. And we have, um, they can get anyone listening right now can get a free call with some a brand strategist on your team. If yeah, they want, right. And that's that's what we love to do is we love yeah. to actually talk to you. We want to hear your story, and we have a team of people to to actually that want to hear your vision and get on the phone with you. Yeah. And so uh, we have we have a special link for you set up for your audience, yeah. right? Yeah, LewisHouse.com/slash/brand-call. So if you go to that link right now, you'll see a little video of me and Rory. Um, and then a little form to fill out to schedule a time to talk to totally. see to see how someone on your team can help them. It'll we may you, or may not be able to help too. Right, and I've, right. I've, you may I've, not be ready for it. You may not be ready for it. Yeah. I, I would say this though that we you know we work with some pretty big name yeah. people like you know like yourself. Uh, you know there's there's other, other celebrities uh, other, and influencers. Others, and, you know semi celebrity or yeah, celebrities. Yeah. Um, some big musicians and stuff, but we also work with the person that's just barely beginning, like doesn't have a ton of money. And so, you know, our, our, our program is designed to help you grow you to the next level. Yeah. So, you know, if you feel called to build a personal brand, I feel pretty confident that 
we can help and yeah. we're one of the best in the world and yeah. you know let's just talk about it and if we're not we'll tell you exactly yeah so go to the link lewishouse.com slash brand call schedule a call asap i'm telling you just getting on the phone with uh, the people on your team they're gonna they're gonna ask you questions to see where you're at just to give you clarity whether you sign up with something you guys have to offer or not, they're going to help you gain more clarity just from the free call. Totally. Yeah. We walk you through a little framework on the call to, yeah, just help to see you where figure you're out at. your vision. Yeah. So it's going to be worth it for the call alone. Schedule the call, lewishouse.com slash brand call and go there right now. Rory, every time I'm with you, we, we learn a lot. We connect a lot. I got one more thing. I got one more thing we have to share. Go ahead. On the topic of, of, of monetization, right? Again, we are all about making money. Like we don't, we don't dislike money. Like we, we are, we're good at making money. We believe in helping people make money, but it, at the end of the day, it's about the, the message. Uh -huh. And it's also about the messenger. And uh, my pastor, Kevin Queen shared something a couple weeks ago that really just like blew me away. And uh, I think it's under, it's important to understand that when you talk about making money, there's like a business side of it. It's processes and systems and structure and clarity and strategy, but there's also a personal side of it. There's a, there's a big heart side of it. And, and here's, what, here's what Kevin said. He said, make sure your influence doesn't grow wider than your character runs deep. Yeah, I love this. Make sure your influence doesn't grow wider than your character runs deep. What's that mean? It means that if you're gonna serve an audience, make sure that you're, you are, you are developing yourself, that you are on your own pursuit of, of, of greatness and getting better and integrity and, and, and living out what you're actually teaching people to do or promoting to do. It's kind of like um, having a life that the more people know you mm -hmm. and if they, if they could see every private moment or if they could hear every private thought, if they could actually hear your thinking, that they would be more impressed wow. with, with who you are. That's crazy. And it's a high level to, to, but, <laughs> to pursue to, but, but, but the reason it also matters is because if it should happen that your influence grows faster than your character, then mm. you run into problems. Problems. You have all sorts of stuff that comes, all sorts of issues and personal ego problems, and personal press problem, problems, press whatever. media, physical health, um, and so you, you, you have to be developing yourself. And I, I think that. that's one of the things I love about the School of Greatness podcast yeah. is just like, this is a place that people can come to develop their character, to keep growing in, in that pursuit. And um, that's why they need to listen. They need to yeah. stay here and they need to share it because we need to, it, we need to get to a hundred million down. We need to get to a million, million downloads in an episode. episode. That's the key. Um, well, uh, if you guys haven't checked out Rory's stuff, he's got a couple of great books. This one is a game changer, Procrastinate on Purpose, really about being more productive and multiplying your time. Take the Stairs, also a classic New York Times bestseller. But get on the brand call, lewishouse.com slash brand call. Sign up right now. Let me know if you signed up. Take a screenshot after you registered for a call. Let me know so I can support you and, and, and keep you inspired. A lot of people have gone through this from the School of Greatness community over the last year. Yeah, a bunch of people. When we did this with. in episode 670, I think hundreds of people have gone on calls and so many of them I've seen develop their brand over time and really grow in an amazing strategic uh, processed way that you guys deliver and execute beautifully. So Thank you. make sure you guys sign up for it. You can check out Rory on Instagram. Uh, social media, yes. website, you can check it all out. But we have all the information at lewishouse.com slash brand call and the show notes for this episode. We'll have it all linked up there. So, Roy, you're the man. Love you. Thank you. I love you. you, brother. Appreciate it. Go build your brand. Change the world. Woo! Make some money. Woo! Let's go. <laughs>